let us see the derivation of the relation. You know, it's P1 is equal to Y1 into P total. Okay. See this P1 in terms of X1 can be written as X1 into P naught 1. Right. In a similar way, P2 is Y2 into P total. Now this P2 can be written as X2 into P naught 2. See, we are actually equalizing the two different things. See, this refers to the solution phase and this refers to the vapor phase. I mean, this refers to liquid phase and this refers to the vapor phase. That way, even here also, this is liquid phase and this is the vapor. Now, it is a known fact that x1 plus x2 is equal to 1. Right. Okay, now this can actually be written as uh, from this relation, you know, x1 can be given as <coughs> x1 is y1 into p total by p naught 1. Similarly, x2 from this relation, x2 is equal to y2 into p total by p naught 2. This is equal to 1. Now, let us take p total on to the other side. That is how it can be written as 1 by P total is equal to Y1 by P naught 1 plus Y2 by P naught 2. So this way it can be modified. From this in fact we can solve some problems based on graphs. Okay. Now, now let us take condensation of vapors of the solution. in the liquid phase if the mole fractions are considered to be x1 and x2 and in vapor phase the mole fractions are as usual y1 and y2 Now the point is, when these vapors are condensed,
you can also say the distillate. When this is considered, and when this uh, distillate is condensed, it will again become liquid. Okay. Suppose the mole fractions of one and two in the second vessel are x one prime and x two prime. <clears throat> you can actually say x one dash and x two dash also. See, because this. Uh, liquid is actually formed by the condensation of the distillate of the first vessel we can actually write like this x1 prime Is equal to y one. Similarly, x two prime or x two dash is equal to y two, isn't it? Because whatever you got here is what is actually come here, isn't it? So y one is equal to x one prime. Y two is equal to x two prime. similar of course this can be continue now even this vaporize again we'll get a distillate and here if the mole fractions are considered to be y1 prime and y2 prime Now let us again na uh, do the same. Now in this case, we can consider. The mole fractions as x one double prime and x two double prime. We can of course give them as x one double prime is equal to y one prime. X two double prime is equal to y two prime, right? So this way we can just go on. We can just go on. Even this also forms a vapor. Again, that can be condensed. That's how the process can be taken. But the point, what I would like to say here, is suppose, suppose the component one is more volatile than the second component. Okay, if that is the case, come on. Because one is more volatile, it forms the more vapor when compared to the second one. So the vapor will be richer with the first one. Now, because the same thing is being condensed. 
of course, we follow this. Yeah, of course, the distillate and uh, I mean Y1 and X1 prime will be the same. But again now, because again, uh, already you got more. Suppose if uh, uh, you have started with, let us say, 0 0.5 of this, I mean, equal mole fraction. But the point is, one is more volatile than the second one. So, obviously, in the first vessel itself, vapor of the first one will be more because it is more volatile. Though you have started with the equal mole fractions of the first and second one, you will have one, I mean the first component more than the second one in the vapor mixture of the first vessel, right? The same is what you have condensed here and see, again in the second vessel also, the thing that gets evaporated will be more comprising of the first one because it is anyway more volatile, right? So again, suppose, uh, if, if you consider this vapor, let us just take it this way. Y1 is equal to 0.6, Y2 is equal to 0.4. This is all just imaginary. Now, of course, X1 is equal to, no doubt it is 0.6. I mean, X1 prime is 0.6, X2 prime is 0.4. Okay, now again, the first one gets more evaporated. And because of that, let's say this has become 0.7 and this has become 0.3, right? Now that is the same what you get in the condensate of the third vessel because you have just condensed the vapors formed in the second vessel, nothing but the distillate. So this will be 0.7 point. And suppose if you consider even this also, it will be like Y1 double prime, Y2 double prime. This would of course be, again, your first component is going to get more evaporated than the second component. Then let us consider this way. So this way, what I would like to finally say is the vapor gets richer and richer with the more volatile component. Now, if you go for the next vessel, it would be like, of course, in the condensate, it would be the same as what you got in uh, Y1 double prime and Y2 double prime. But when you go for the distillate of the fourth vessel, it is going to be 0.9 and 0.1. So that's how. Not exactly that. But this way, the vapor gets richer and richer with the more volatile component. That is what I want to say finally. Okay. Now let us take the experimental determination of relative lowering of vapor pressure for which a 
Oswald Walker method is used. Okay. Oswald Walker method makes use of solution and solvent bulk. Okay. In this We take a series of bulk. Initially, let me first draw that. So these are the solution bulk. Then the solvent bulk. These are initially weighed. I mean, they are weighed before the experiment. Now, see the experiment is actually carried out by passing dry air. First into the solution bulk and then into the solvent bulk. Okay, so these are uh, the solution bulk and these are the solvent bulk. Okay. See when dry air is passed first through the solution bulk. In fact, this dry air takes away the vapors formed over the solution bulk. I mean, these the vapors are taken. As a result, they'll have some loss in their mass. Okay. See, this loss in the mass are the weight of solution bulk can be given as directly proportional to the vapor pressure of the solution. What, whatever vapor formed over the solution bulbs is taken off, taken away by the dry air. Now the same dry air, see it's going in a, in a series manner. The same is taken into solvent bulk. Even here also,
dry air takes away the vapor, gets saturated with the vapor, you can say. Right. Now, the loss in mass of solvent bulk can actually be given as C. Overall, it is going to be C. You are getting PS from so this PS also goes into, I mean, whatever vapors that are carried away by the dry air from the solution bulbs is again going into the solvent bulb. So in this case, what I would like to say is you need to be a little cautious. Of course, the overall is P0. Okay, let us, let us take only P because we have been using the P till now for the vapor pressure of the solution. Now, as such, because that P has also come into the solvent bulbs, if you want to know the loss in mass of only the solvent bulbs, it has to be written as C0 overall from this minus whatever has come from here. Is that okay? So, last in mass of the solvent bulbs can be given as C0 minus P. Okay. Now, finally, it is uh, passed into a YouTube a U-shaped tube, tube consisting of a dehydrating agent. Generally, the solvent used is water. We consider anhydrous calcium chloride. Okay, so now the whole vapor is absorbed by, I mean, whatever is going from this. I mean, this plus this will, of course, go through this. And that is absorbed by this, isn't it? Let me tell you that the gain, therefore, gain in the mass of YouTube can be given as a directly proportional to P plus P naught minus P. Of course, let me just give it straight away. P plus P naught minus P. What is that? This is nothing but P naught. Right. So this is, of course, the gain in mass of huge. Right. Whatever C. In this case, it is P. In this case, of course, if you consider them this way, then it would have been P naught. But see, because you are getting something from the solution bulbs, and that of course mixes up with the vapor of this here, we are actually doing this. Now, in this case, it is going to be P plus P naught minus P, nothing but P. Sorry, P naught. Okay. 
So that is all about Ostwald Walker Smith. Okay. So based on this, of course, we can solve questions. 